Hello everyone, my name is Zach Gordon and the talk I'm giving today is called Speciation and Convergent Evolution of Bioluminescence in Marine Fish. So the outline for this presentation is starting with bioluminescence, what it is, facts about it, the characteristics of organisms. Then I will go into convergent evolution and talk about the first paper I read. Then I will move to speciation and the second paper I read. I'll then end the talk with the takeaways from this presentation. So what is bioluminescence? It's the process by which organisms produce their own light. And this involves a fairly simple um, chemical reaction. Starting with a protein luciferin, this protein is not varied uh, much across the tree of life. However, an enzyme also involved called luciferase, they are species specific and highly variable. In addition to luciferin, which is just the generic name for the molecule in addition to the luciferase as the generic name for the enzyme, in jellyfish there is also a chemical called aquarin, which serves a, a similar function but I won't talk about that here. Now, in order for this reaction to occur, oxygen is required. And in the ocean, oxygen is everywhere. So for organisms to bioluminesce, it's fairly easy for them to obtain the oxygen they need. Now, the oxygen reacts with the enzyme and the protein luciferin to essentially give energy to the luciferin molecule. The energy uh, raises the, the now chemical called oxyluciferin to an excited state. And once it drops down, it releases this energy in the form of light. Some of these reactions require cofactors like magnesium or ATP, but some of them do not. Uh, and also there's a few organisms that obtain the chemicals for this reaction from their diet. And the best way I like to think about how this reaction occurs is by means of a glow stick. You have two chemicals within the glow stick separated by a barrier. And when you crack it, the chemicals mix and light is produced. So a similar process, not entirely, but it's a pretty good metaphor or simile. <laughs> so some facts about it, approximately 10,000 species in 800 genre represented of 13 phyla bioluminesce. This is a huge amount of organisms and this is across the tree of life. In addition, 80% of metazoan or animal bioluminescent genre occurs in the world's oceans. So already a huge portion of animals that bioluminesce are only found in the ocean. On top of that, roughly 80% of the eukaryotic life that inhabits the deep sea, which is below 200 meters, bioluminesce. So again, a huge portion of these organisms are limited to the greater depths of the ocean. Now, within this split, you also have about 76% that live in pelagic ecosystems. So this means open ocean. Then 30 to 40% in benthic, benthic ecosystems, which is essentially the bottom of the sea. And these are rough estimates because of course, not all species have been discovered. <laughs> so what purposes does bioluminescence have? Some of these overlap but for the most part, they're, they're split into defense and offense, in addition to mating. So there's startle. An organism will flash to startle a predator. Counter illumination, which is depicted in this image. Half of the organism, usually the bottom, will light up. So any predator looking up for a prey item will have a hard time distinct, 
distinctualizing, distinguishing whether a prey is a prey item or it's just more ocean. It's harder for them to visualize if there's actually an animal there. There's also misdirection. So in the case of this GIF, there is a little plankton organism that produces a smoke that glows. And the fish gets startled by this when it bites it. So again, kind of an overlap. There's also distractive body parts. This is a brittle star that bioluminesces. And in addition to having body parts, specifically that bioluminesce, there's also something called a sacrificial tag right here. And that's essentially where an organism is trying to misdirect their predator. So the predator will bite down on the organism. The organism intentionally wants them to attack that area so that they can escape without taking too much damage. There's all, this is another um, instance of uh, a misdirection, but this also serves as a burglar alarm. And this is a really interesting phenomenon that I had not heard of before, where organisms will produce light when they're in the presence of a predator. And the purpose of this is so another predator that eats the predator already attacking the organism will see this light and be attracted to eat that predator of the organism bioluminescing. So it's kind of like the enemy of my enemy is my friend sort of situation, which is really cool. You also have warning coloration. So in the case of this jellyfish, it could be toxic to a predator, potential predator. Then you move into the offense side of things. So we all know the classic anglerfish, they have lures. Lures look like potential prey items, but secretly they're just a, a front for the predator to try and eat an incoming prey item. You also have organisms that uh, use bioluminescence to attract prey in another sort of way without a lure. So in the case of the shark, it's visual, but organisms are still gonna be attracted to that light regardless. And then the final tactic for offense is illumination. And this is not super common and it mostly focuses on red light. And I'll talk about red light in a minute. But the basic premise is that organisms can't really detect the red light, but only the predator that has this light can use it as a flashlight to peer in the dark and locate prey. In addition, you have mate attraction. So organisms of the same species will flash, kind of like fireflies mating, where they just need to communicate with each other because it's in complete darkness and there's no other way to do that. In addition, there is non-species specific attraction where in the case of another paper I read for my short talk, there are fungi that bioluminesce and the purpose of this was unknown until they tested whether or not in insects were attracted to this light and they determined that insects are attracted the purpose of attraction is to spread spores with the help of the insects, kind of like pollination. All right, so what are the characteristics of bioluminescence? Bioluminescence occurs in photophores, which are specialized organs dedicated to light production. They have all the chemicals within, minus oxygen, and it can either be generated endogenously, which means they produce everything themselves, or they have bacteria through symbiosis that assist in the light production. They produce the light 
and in return they get nutrients, a place to live, etc. There is also variation in structure. So for the case of the flashlight fish, they have a photophore underneath their eye, similar to the dragonfish we saw in the previous slide. And this essentially serves as a flashlight for them. They can see in the dark. However, you also have organism, organisms like the shrimp that release all the chemicals and when mixed with the oxygen and the water, they'll bioluminesce, producing a smoke screen as we saw in the previous slide as well. You can also have photophores across an organism. So this is a lanternfish and they have photophores all over their body. They're in a few minutes, we'll find out that they have different purposes for these locations, but here's another variation in location. And this image is of a Hawaiian bobtailed squid. They actually use bacteria to produce the light for themselves. And there's a really cool study that's looked at how these bacteria get to the squids and what stage of development that is. And if they're released during the lifetime and they regain more. So I would recommend to look into that because that's a really interesting study. And in addition to the squid, uh, organisms like the anglerfish also use symbiosis bacteria in their lures. Now, in addition to location, there's also chemical variation as I mentioned in the first slide. So in the ocean, light attenuates, which means as you get further down, you can only get the lower wavelengths. So you get lots of blue, some green, some purple, but red and the other warm colors do not go far at all, which is why in pictures, you don't really see those colors without bright light. And so in this figure, you can see that in marine organisms, they have a huge majority of blue and purple and a little green. But for terrestrial, or terrestrial organisms, they have a lot more green because it's not the ocean. So they have no problem showing off those colors. Now, one really interesting tactic that certain species have gained is red light. So in the previous slide, we have the dragonfish. They have developed a photophore with red light that they use, similar to a flashlight fish, to see in the dark. The benefit, though, of using red light is that a lot of fish don't have the eyes to perceive this red light. So they cannot see the dragonfish shining this light on them, but the dragonfish has a huge scope of vision to see the prey items. And this color variation also comes from the variation in chemical. You also have variation in flashiness or continuation of the bioluminescence. So some organisms like the flashlight fish will continue to bioluminesce. However, organisms like the, um, the lantern fish, they'll blink to attract mates, to startle predators, etc. whatever. Now, convergent evolution is the process that similar features develop in distantly related organisms. In this figure, it's showing organisms across the tree of life. You have fungi, you have fish, you have mollusks, jellyfish, and it's documented that in over 700 genre of metazoans, so specifically animals, 
bioluminescence is found across the tree of life. And in addition, only known terrestrial animals capable of bioluminescence are arthropods. So you have fireflies, you have centipedes and millipedes, you have glowworms, but nothing else that are considered animals. You have bacteria and fungi, but not animals. Um, but in, in the marine environment, you have it across metazoans. So mollusks, fish, invertebrae, everything. And so the first paper used really complicated genetic and taxonomic computing, which I'm not even gonna try to explain. And they used 11 gene fragments from ray finned fish, which essentially have more bones in their fins. And what they found is that there was repeated and widespread evolution of bioluminescence in marine fishes, which was also the title of the article. This is a phylogenetic tree they developed, and this includes a lot of deep sea fish, but they also have a few fish from coral reefs and uh, the coastal area. Now, it's inferred that 27 times among 14 major lineages of ray finned fishes, bioluminescence has developed separately, which is why you see gray around in the beginning, and then suddenly you see one of the colors branch out. Intrinsic bioluminescence has evolved eight separate times, intrinsic, endogenous, where the bioluminescence is all created within the organism without the assistance of symbiosis. And this is roughly 785 out of the 1510 that are known to bioluminesce. On the other hand, bacterially mediated symbiosis and bioluminescence has evolved at least 17 times, which is a lot more than eight. And, but there are also less species that do this. So it's kind of, it's a rough even. Uh, and it's interesting that intrinsic has evolved less than symbiotic, but there are less symbiotic species. And this is shown in this tree where blue is the intrinsic, green is symbiotic, and the two in the instances of pink, they are not sure yet. In addition to this, they also know that squaliform sharks, which are double fin sharks, it has evolved once or twice. So in total, 29 instances of bioluminescent convergence has occurred in vertebrae alone, specifically in the ocean. And this was one study done after the next paper I'm gonna talk about. And this gave corroboration and indication that other, other lineages with intrinsic and the potential for bioluminescent communication have increased, increased rates of diversification. So as we see in this tree, in the case of the myctiforms, which the next paper talks about the lanternfish. This has branched out way more than a lot of the other instances of bioluminescent evolution, um, along with this stomiliforms. Okay, so moving on to speciation. It is the formation of new and distinct species through reproductive isolation. However, in the open ocean, there aren't too many isolating barriers for reproduction. So the next study focused on photophore patterns in lanternfish, and their purpose was to try and figure out how this order has uh, speciated more than any other 
uh, group of fish. Now, lanternfish are among the most widely distributed, diverse, and populous vertebrae, with estimates suggesting a total global biomass of 550 to 660 million tons, accounting for up to 65% of all deep sea fish biomass. And we can see why with how many species there are and how quickly, relatively, ge geologically, they have diversified. And a really interesting um, anecdote about these fish is during World War II, they were using submarines to engage in combat. And they found it really odd that when they were using sonar at night, the floor, the ocean floor seemed to be higher than during the day. And this is because there were a huge amount of lanternfish that engage in vertical migration, where at night they'll come up higher in the ocean to search for food and during the day they'll retreat back down and they were comparing this to another group of fish called bristle mouths which are also widely um, distributed and found and the difference is that there are 252 species of lanternfish but only 21 species of bristlemouth. Why is this? They both have photophores. They both bioluminesce. They're similar in size. So that's the purpose of this study. And they hypothesized that the bioluminescence functions as a species-specific communication or identification system among these species-rich lineages. So in order to speciate, you need groups of individuals that will not engage in reproduction for whatever reason. Either they're separated geographically, which is the classic example, or there's some other some other event occurring simultaneously with the individuals near each other. And so this paper was called Species Specific Bioluminescence Facilitates Speciation in the Deep Sea. All right, so how did they figure this out? Well, they photographed a ton of lanternfish varying across the tree, as in the previous slide. They used individuals from the subfamily and individuals from a genus. Now they were looking at lateral, which also means side, photophores. So the photophores here that are glowing compared to the ventral photophores, which are the, the ones underneath that are not glowing, ventral meaning bottom. And they used a software with these pictures to locate the spatial patterning of these photophores. On these figures, a clumping indicates how related the patterns are to each other, color meaning the different groups within either the subfamily or the genus. And so based on these images, it's pretty clear that there is correlation between the patterns within these groups. They also did the same thing with the ventral photophores, but they did not find significant clumping within the same groups of species. And this indicates that a lateral change in the photophores contributes to recognition and genetic isolation where individuals with photophores in a different location from one species to another, they won't reproduce, thus creating speciation. So what are the takeaways from this? Well, bioluminescence is variable. 
It's found across the tree of life, but a massive majority are in deep sea organisms. And specifically, we looked at fish in this presentation. There's also lots of convergence. And as we saw in that one of the first slides, there were a lot of different strategies, defense, offense, reproduction that we saw. And they've obviously converged on these techniques or strategies because we see them in varying groups of individuals or species. Also, phenotypic variation or variation in location, chemical, it leads to reproductive isolation as we saw in the lanternfish. And this creates the process by which speciation occurs and organisms diversify. Finally, biochemistry and behavior can go hand in hand, culminating in evolution. So variation in chemical chemistry, for instance, how fast an organism bioluminesces, is, what color it is, and the behavior they exhibit if they engage in a reproductive strategy can go hand in hand, culminating in evolution. Thank you.